such as protocol fees, internally generated funds, welfare fees, sponsorships, agent fees, agency fees, etc. We are all involved. Well, the debate has begun on Facebook, so you can go on our Facebook wall, join 99.7 FM. You'll find the post there. Join the debate. That's what we're talking about on the Super Morning Show. Are the solutions beyond us? There is no but I'm sure you're tired of using a garden hose to water your lawn every time and you're tired of your brown lawn. Stay green with Ink Green. Enjoy a 25% discount on all automatic lawn irrigation materials from April to June 2019. Call us on 302 819 Ink Green is another quality solution from Interplast. And with Interplast, wherever you are, we make sure water reaches you, even in space. It's now easier and convenient to own that electronic appliance and that furniture you've been dreaming of this year. First Atlantic Bank is giving you an interest-free loan up to 40,000 Ghana cities to deck out your home with your choice of item without hustle. Visit any First Atlantic Bank branch nationwide today and the following partner outlets. TCL, Somo Vision, Sinmin's Furniture, Novotech, Electroland Ghana, Macland and give your home the upgrade you deserve. For further information, please call us on 030-268-22034 or 4. Or 030 268 0825 or 6. Buy now, pay later at no interest. Kindly note terms and conditions apply. First Atlantic Bank, refreshingly different. Good morning, Malik. Good morning, Raymond. Good, good morning. morning. And how are we all doing this morning? Oh, good, good. Yeah, fabulous. Awesome, awesome. Fabulous. Run out of time, so let's go straight to the front. Let's start with the Daily Guide newspaper. Ofosu Ampofu arrested. That's on the front page of the, the Daily Guide newspaper. Court dismisses injunction against EC. Ghana remains safe, says government. Then kidnapped Canadians' host, hostel closed down. Now, the new Crusading Guide is reporting this morning. Eating leftover foods hazardous. That's on the front page with Supreme Court must interpret transitional provisions as time bound. This is Professor Kweku Asari making that point on this network yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's also on the front page of the new Crusading Guide. It was a very enlightening conversation yesterday with, with Professor Yes, Kupasa. lawyer Malik about Yes, that now <laughs> also on the front page of the new Crusading Guide is... Australian deportees visa scandal, immigration in cover-up, over 60 fake journalists. And that's on the front page of the New Crusading Guide. The Ghanaian Observer has moved to block EC's limited voter registration, EC floors NDC at Supreme Court. Police arrest, for example, is also here. You can't claim property with empty rhetoric. That's principal witness tells court in Dentra Palace case. And more jobs coming under cylinder recirculation program. That's according to MPA boss um, Al Hassan Tampoli. <laughs> And I would have definitely skipped the Ofosuan Pofu story on the front page of the Chronicle, but this is how they put it. Ofosuan Pofu smoked out from his hole. Yeah. <laughs> in actually in the better cameras. But MPC disarray over legal reports also on the front page of the Chronicle paper and pairs as ministers and peace this is assembly members who are running the district assembly concept at the lower levels saying mm. the daily statesman newspaper has this interesting headline ghana beyond aid doesn't mean cuts to aid guess who's saying that yao osafo mafo hey, coco calls you mean says the aisha one you yeah okay. welcome <laughs> back to here. public space <laughs> coco calls the markets bluff ghana's cocoa board and Cote d'Ivoire ccc Push for floor price. Fugitive NDC chairman smoked out, similar to the headline Raymond read. Police to release official statement today. Those are the stories on the front page of the Daily Statesman. The Ghanaian Times is reporting this morning that pensioners in trouble for swindling businesswoman and police is arresting no, for some purpose of here. The spook of throwing out the EC case is one of the three main stories which have been predominating all the headlines mm -hmm. this morning. And there are the key stories on the front page of the Daily Graphic as well. For some purpose arrest, caught throwing out injunction against limited voter registration, Ghana Coco Cote d'Ivoire's fire salvo threatening to withhold cocoa sales demand $2,600 per ton. Back page of, there's one more story on the front page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Guyana confess highest national award on President Ekufado. Back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. 350 bed teaching hospital inaugurated at Okwenya. Um, yeah, those are the stories on the back page. One story on the back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Now, the final is the very last paper before me. Now, Ghana remains safe and security agencies remain vigilant 
This is according to the prestigious National Security of the Republic of Ghana. And 1.5 million pregnant mothers to benefit from the GE VIT scan by 2020. Then there's one about um, no floor price, no cocoa sale, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire doing no contribution, no chop kind of arrangement on the floor. There. NCNC, right? Yes, yes, yes. Speaking yes. of the person who said NCNC, <laughs> he was the center of attention, Mr. Fosampofo. Uh, I want you to give us the details of the story, but listen to this first. The national anthem urges every citizen to fight the oppressor's rule. Nothing can break the resolve of a determined people. Yes, yes, yes. So that is the, 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 the general secretary of... What is your problem? That's the general secretary of the NDC, John Sedin Kete. He was speaking yesterday at the Criminal Investigation Department headquarters, CID headquarters yesterday. When Mr. Ofusu Ampofu was eventually granted bail, police inquiry bail by the CID after his arrest on account of some warrants obtained from the high court by the police. Now, we know that yesterday Mr. Ofusu Ampofu was picked up at a church. The, the, um, he was at a, ch- at a church at which he was having a meeting with some uh, members of his party in Accra here at Laboni. That's where he was picked up. We know that the NDC had issued a, a statement saying that they were aware that warrants had been obtained and that he was be, going to be arrested in a manner which embarrassed him. Nonetheless, nonetheless, the police picked him up yesterday. They sent him to his house for some search in his home before they sent him to the CID headquarters for interrogation. His arrest um, is in connection with allegations that he's been involved in kidnappings and of course also market fires the criminal investigations department of the ghana police service said that they have information and this is information they gathered from persons that they are interrogating relating to these crimes and those persons mentioned him as one person who is a promoter of the kidnappings and the market fires as well on the basis of what they call actionable intelligence they wrote a letter to him specifically on um, may 7th inviting him to appear before them for interrogation in relation to these claims that have been made by persons that they are uh, investigating. When he turned down that investigation, we know this invitation, we know this for a fact, Mm -hmm. that the the Council of Elders of the NDC issued a statement saying that they will not allow him to submit himself to the police CID for investigations and that he was exercising his constitutional right to not accept the inv- invitation and, 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 and help the police with their investigation. He said he will not go. A month later, the police called him and said that invitation was still open. He still insisted that the only condition under which he will appear before the CID and help them with their investigation was if they sought and obtained warrants. So they sought and obtained three warrants for arrest, search and seizure. Then they picked him yesterday, went and searched his house, and then seized all his gadgets. And they are going to do forensic audits according to the police CID. Forensic audits of these gadgets to see whether they can establish a link between him and the persons who allege that he is the promoter of these uh, acts of the kidnappings and the market fires. I was actually interested to know that Dr. Vladimir Chidansu said it's not out of place to say that these kidnappings are being done with a political motive to get that expert opinion from you I mean, that's perhaps because of our history we've had times where people suspected that some women were brought in dead or alive within a period in the run up to the 2000 election you exactly. know there were reports of so many women dying later exactly. while Kwanzaa was held responsible and all of that so security has always had some political twist to it and mindful of the kind of politics we do in our part of the world it is really not out of place and I'm, i will not dismiss it any day that just because of real politics somebody might be interested in creating a sense of insecurity and it, it matters insecurity is top on the agenda of anybody seeking to run down a state and say that you are no longer in charge of it and also you cannot protect the people that world then if people fear for their lives they are likely to reject you in the case and the allegation of opposition politicians being responsible for fires is not new okay. we know that the last time there were market fires under the previous government members of that government accused the opposition at the time of being behind the market fires and, and subsequently, there's supposed to be a report um, that report i don't know if it's already the yes, some americans came, yeah. 
and did an investigation and investigation into the fires at the time we don't know what the outcome of, except that of when that you mentioned the church part i just realized that you know chachu chikata was also paid from church you remember that sunday morning <laughs> okay <laughs> chachu yes. was in a church it's, service yes, yes. So, over some was having a meeting of a political party so this is number church three building. church ah. street at laboni that's where I he see. was picked up and yes. he's returning to he's returning to the police cid on thursday june 13 that's tomorrow Yes, but the national security has spoken about the security status in the country. Yes, they've assured Ghanaians that now, let's be clear, we are safe and the system remains vigilant. That's the security agencies. And there's no, this is important, mm-hmm. actionable intelligence or imminent threat to Ghana. You know, Malik mentioned actionable intelligence. So there is actionable intelligence yes. to inform the arrest of Ofusu and Popo, yes. But there's no actionable, actionable intelligence, intelligence or imminent threat to Ghana. Okay. That is what they are saying in you this You mean actionable intelligence on an imminent threat to Ghana? Yes. In terms yes, of terror yes, attacks? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. And of course, it also notes that those who are actually within the jurisdiction, those who have actually said um, they are not safe because of travel advisories from first the UK, then Canada, then... Australia. Just around the time that this statement was being issued, Australia was also preparing its own travel advisory, okay. which, which supported this claim. And the UK has also updated their travel advisory. Yes, but if you read the detail, and they are giving some detail, like for example, there's been increase in petty crime, like pickpocketing, bag snatching, and opportunistic theft on certain roads in Accra. The main areas of risk highlighted are the Graphic Road, George Walker Bush Highway, Accra Mall Roundabout, Awudoma Cemetery Road, Pokwasi Amasama Road, Teshi Nungwa Road, Labadi Beach Area, and the Koko Bite Beach Area. Of course, they are asking people to be extraordinarily vigilant in these areas. Keep your windows up and your doors locked safe. That is from the UK advisory that they've actually issued. It just sounds to me like this is a police statement of a sort. I mean, because I've seen the police issue similar ones. Decent. Because I was expecting that, I mean, you know, it is UK, so it will be based on superior intelligence. But this one, dear, it so sounds like what experts, we know already. The security experts tell you that they analyze the happenings in the news media, mm-hmm. the police reports, the happenings in the country, and then they base the travel advice on that. So it's basically, you know, not an independent one as far as yeah. the security experts are telling us. It's not an independent one on their end, okay. but it's an analysis of what is happening. And you have to add that this is quite routine, actually. Mm-hmm. No, no, but that, that's the point I'm trying to make in this particular case because I was going to doubt the national security's, uh, what they call it, firm assurance to the people until when you break down what the people are telling us, it's just like they, uh, and, and again, I don't know where the Australian people get their data from. It's not true that within the last few months or even this year compared to previous years, uh, robbery has been on the increase. That is not backed by the data that is supposed to be mm. available, at least mm. from the police in this case. Mm. So mm. if they have some other extraordinary data, maybe we can interrogate that differently. But, well, the reality on this ground is that our security agents remain vigilant. We know of the incident in the Upper West region, mm-hmm. and uh, we know that we deployed a huge number of military people there. We know that in other, of course, we are porous borders. The number last time was over 47. Yes, 47 of the <laughs> unapproved, <laughs> unapproved entry, entry units. I hope these places are being manned to make sure that the people are safe. And going into next year, we will always have the safety be improved because election years over the years are proving to be years where crime is on the increase anyway. So for me, Raymond, I think the key part of this entire statement that was released was the first part where it says that um, the national security officials held a meeting on Monday, mm-hmm. June 10, 2019 at Jubilee House. The meeting was to examine recent travel advisories about Ghana and the intelligence reports on Ghana's security situation. Not just really the travel advisories, but the intelligence reports Report, yeah. about Ghana's security situation. So, there are meetings ongoing analyzing the intelligence reports and we are hoping that as and when we, we deem it a, a, a credible threat, we would of course step up because we have to also admit that this is not the first time that our neighbor, a neighboring country has had terror attacks. Mm-hmm. Ivory Coast had the Grand Batam attacks mm-hmm. uh, in uh, last year. And of course, re- most recently, we've had the Burkina Faso one. It's just that the so, Burkina Faso one is quite consistent. So it makes people worry whether or not the people are still in charge. It's also because there. of that access yeah. security alert that named Burkina Faso and Ghana yeah. and had the Burkina Faso attacks. But of course, um, those are all situations that the national security officials are taking into consideration. We want to have, uh, perhaps we should have some more clever communication from them, more detailed communication. And, so and, and staying with matters of matters uh-huh, related uh-huh. to security and kidnapping. Happens. Okay. The private hostel where the private hostel where the two Canadians uh, stayed before they were kidnapped uh-huh. has been closed down, and it's essentially been closed down because it is not operating according to law. 
and officials of the Ghana Tourism Authority uh, in the Ashanti region, assisted by police yesterday, locked up, according to the Daily Guide newspaper, locked up the hostel, which they said it is not registered to provide accommodation in accordance with the law. And the Ashanti regional manager of the GTA, Peter Theophilus Champong, he said that the facility does not meet the, the requirements of the, the, the legislations, LI 2238 and 2239. These allies talk about enterprises in the accommodation, food, beverages, and entertainment industry and how they can operate. But this particular hostel did not meet the requirement. He warned that members of the public are not supposed to patronize services of such places because this particular hostel did not even have a CCTV camera in place so that if anything untoward happened, you could preview it and, and, and find some information on the basis of which investigation can be conducted and actions can be taken. But does the Ghana Tourism Authority regularly publish the number of hostels which are registered with them so that if you see the name of a hostel, you can cross-check it against their database? Unfortunately, what if it doesn't. the hostel has, has registered and their license has expired or has been revoked? What if they show me a documentation I don't know how to recognize? And, again, and only God knows how long this hostel has been operating and how many of such hostels have are that's operating the, the without following the law Which and the yet question? this Ghana tourism authority completely does not do anything so, so, until this happens and i mean i mean so this has happened fair enough so let's not end at the advice can we have a list so that we know what to look out for when we are going there but the police are hopeful that they will find the, the two ladies lauren patricia Catherine tilly uh, 19 and bailey jordan 20 uh, bailey jordan chitty Okay. The police are hopeful that they will find them and 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 then rewrite them with their families. Okay, we'll move away from these security issues, Raymond. Um, some contractors are threatening to lock up 766 public schools. Yes, this is because government has failed to pay them. Now, you do recall that in 2017, we we're told that there was some six billion debt that the previous government left for this particular government to pay. And in the early year, early months of 2018, the finance minister reported clearing the debt. Indeed, that was not even the early months. It was somewhere in July 20. 2018, almost a month from now, a year from now, the finance minister reported clearing the six billion debt. But the Association of Building and Civil Engineering Contractors and Concessions Public Sector Contractors have threatened to lock up all of these 766 public school facilities they have built. They say that they actually pre-finance most of these and they have certificates awaiting clearance, but they are not being paid as of the times required in this particular case. They are worried that government told them it has secured some 500 million US dollars to pay them. Still, that's November last year, and this was announced to all of us in this country, but that money has not hit their accounts yet, and we are almost in the middle of the new year. They are struggling to pay their workers. Some of them are actually running away from the debtors. In fact, they are shying away from its contribution or the lack thereof to the banking uh, scandal that recently happened not long ago. But their insistence is that there's a problem. They ought to be paid immediately or they'll be forced to go and shut down the schools that they built. Mm. Right. Uh, thanks, Ray, for bringing us those updates. Malik, some interesting news that we've heard uh, from the COCO conference that is happening here in Accra. Uh-huh. So, the two countries, the two countries that produce or supply 65% of the global cocoa beans say that they will not supply the cocoa beans unless there is a change in the price of cocoa per ton. They want $2,600 per ton. Currently, it's hovering around 2500 or a little over 2500 They want 2600 uh, You would say that that's a rather conservative demand on the basis of what you to found a, th- a threat not to supply the beans again unless you obtain 2600 per ton. Now, these two countries, as I said, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, they supply 65% of the total cocoa beans requirement on the market. You remember that President Ekufuado, the last time when he spoke on this matter, said that it was... On, it was inappropriate that the two countries, if they came together and decided that they would not supply the, the, the cocoa beans, they would be able to influence the price of the product. And we are about the only two countries or the few countries that produce things that we do not determine what the prices are. Now, the two countries say, we want to determine our own price. And the reason why they want to be able to do this is so that they can help the farmers to obtain a great share of the 100 billion cocoa industry. 
that it is unfair that the farmers are not getting much out of their sweat. Because you see, Malik, we produce 65% of the world's cocoa. And as, it, as two nations, we get 6% of the world's chocolate industry. Nestle, as a company, is worth more. If, I, if I'm using the right expression, I don't want to guess the, the, name, the name of the company wrong. Pardon me, listeners. But the world cook chocolate industry is worth way more than our GDPs put together. Mm-hmm. You can pick one company and they're worth about $93 billion. But you are supplying beans, not chocolate. But the question you have not is, demonstrated the capacity Malik, the and the willingness and the determination I would, no, 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 to Malik, process I would, your cocoa. I would, I would you, depart from you on that. The countries that produce oil in this, in this world... And I'm, I'm about to pull for you the OPEC figures. Mm-hmm. In 1973, there was an uh, oil crisis because OPEC said that we won't give you oil anymore. Mm-hmm. The price raised, went up from $3 per barrel to $12 per barrel. Mm-hmm. They alone, because you see, it is you that who place a premium on your product. It is a, a, it's a, it's a, it's a story that we have been sold that because I've added value to it, you can only get 6% of the market. It's not fair. 6% of a global market. I'm struggling when I produce 65% point. of the raw material. Now, Closely linked to that, however, Malik, is that in September 2019, the government has announced that every student would have a, a chocolate drink every day. That is a, that is the way that we can use our, our cocoa. And, and of course, I mean, CPC and other companies are also doing some level of exactly. processing in this country. Exactly. I know exactly. about that. And last, last year, I reviewed stories here where CPC, the, the Ghana Stock Exchange is actually threatening to delay CPC because they are unable to, they are unable to meet the requirements on the market. The point I am making is that if we don't add any value to the cocoa, we will continue to have this it's argument. We we'll produce 60, 65% and it won't amount to much. We are actually going to take cocoa syndication loan to come and buy it. Persons such as Bryce Simmons have argued that if you do proper analysis, we are actually losing money through cocoa production and not earning, not gaining more. Okay, yes. Uh, what you're saying, Malik, is, is in line. It's in order. Yes, sometimes you get passionate about these issues. The, the online news review is brought to you by um, Zenith Bank in your best interest, Goyle. Good energy. Make your day productive by relying on quality fuel from Goyle. Your three times CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Goyle Super XP and Diesel XP are additivated to enhance strong engine performance and prolong the lifespan of your vehicle. Above all, you are guaranteed extra quality with our fuel analyzer from our mobile laboratory van. Get your money's worth every day by buying fuel and lubricants from any of Goyle's over 360 service stations nationwide and experience good energy. Buy Goyle. Go Ghana. Goyle. Good energy. Goyle. Yanara. Yedia. Now, when it comes to traveling with ease and comfort, Zenith Bank's wide array of MasterCard and Visa card will help you do just that. You can conveniently use your Zenith Bank MasterCard or Visa card at over 300, about 33 million Visa and MasterCard branded ATMs worldwide. On the internet for online purchases and payments, in shop for payments on goods and services, at all Zenith Bank ATMs and on local and international POS or retail outlets that accept Visa and MasterCard. Sign up today or if you already have one, use a Zenith MasterCard and Visa card for a great travel experience. Go light with, Zen- with Zenith Bank. It's faster and smarter. Zenith Bank in your best interest. No imminent threats. Ghana rejects UK, Canada security alert. MyJoinline.com. EPA boss says time to implement plastic take back policy. AdumOnline.com says it's wrong to allow wives and girlfriends in Black Stars camp. A psychologist speaking there. BC candidates take six week baby to examination center. A lot more of those stories coming through. BBC.com says United States records the biggest ever victory in the FIFA Women's World Cup as they crushed Thailand 13 <laughs> 0. Serious. We'll take these important messages. We'll be right back. <laughs> 